forget to pack your vitamin C. Take at least two every day. You don't want to catch a cold. Don't worry, I'll take a bunch. And you have your stationery? Yes, Mom. Write it three times a week and be sure and eat good, nourishing food while you're away. I will. And don't forget those books I got you. What were they? Red Expectations? Someone up on the roof is throwing water balloons down at their Pinewood boys. I want them. So go and get them. You probably don't know who I am. Look, you're right, pal. I don't know who you are, and I don't care who you are. Now, I'm saying goodbye to a very good friend of mine. Yeah, well, I happen to be Ike Dimmick, head counselor of Camp Pinewood, and your superior. Look, Chief, uh, I got 12 kids here from Cleveland and Detroit. Now, I'm supposed to stay here and keep an eye on them, okay? Only until you deliver them to me. Now, they're delivered. So say you goodbye, and then get up on the roof! You might as well do this. I gotta go. All right, all right. Listen, uh, Patty, I'm gonna be in Clifton, Maine for the next eight weeks. Get a chance, drop me a line. I'll do better than that. I'll try and visit. Bye, sir. Wow. 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 Uh, uh, Patty, right first, okay? All right, I'm going. Listen, uh, hang on to this. What is it? <laughs> Timmy Mezzi. Homesick, eh? Well, we'll just knock that out of him at Pinewood, won't we? Just hold on to the road, face. Please, 
always won, Bobby. I had the best army camp this year. Who else can we plaster? There's that creep, Idemic. Watch me nail the jerk. All right, you two juvenile delinquents. You're a counselor? Give me that. All right, all right. We will be boarding the train shortly. I want it done in an orderly fashion. You ought to go directly to your... Fortunately for you two guys, we have similar tastes. Now let's get out of here. Good work, good work. You nabbed him. Huh? We don't no, tell Big Earth about minute, this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Relax, Mussolini. It uh, wasn't these guys. It was some kids from another camp. In fact, these guys were up on the roof trying to catch him. Yeah, but they, they got away. Oh, wow. Well, you boys tried. That's the Pinewood spirit. Okay, everybody on board. Everybody on board. A through L to the left. Hold this. A through L to the left. And through row, L to the right. Row, row, row. Yeah, yeah. Go right to your seat. Right, go in the back. Let's go. June 24th. The train roars. The parents sigh. And the children cry. And I am bound for camp. Two months in May. Sure, I'm coming. Sixty days in the remote north woods. Days that will bring artistic nourishment for my tender young bud. Okay. Go. Go straight. All right. Okay, guys. Whoa. Steve, sorry. That's what we All right, Dennis Baxter, archery. How you doing? Archery. You good with a bow? Uh, no. No, not really. You see, Big Irv is, uh customer of my dad's meat packing company and instead of uh, sitting around with dad's pigs all summer I figured I'd do this. All right. Besides archery is the only opening to hat. Winston Churchill. Hang on a minute. Hey, Steve? What's up? He's expanding. Whoa. Why didn't you tell your parents about this? Jerry, have you ever had the mumps? No, I don't think so. The entire camp's here. Yeah, this calls for immediate action. Baxter, quarantine him. Go, Jerry. Okay, look out, guys. Okay, listen, Jerry, why don't you just uh, lie down and relax, okay? elevated. My feet elevated? Maybe not. I'll be okay. Okay, listen, you just buzz if you need anything, okay? sucker for trains, you know? The adventure, the style. Woody Guthrie, the romance. Me too. You know, I, uh, think this compartment is empty. Would you like to go in and sit down? Well, why not? Why not? Indianapolis. How about that?
put your cheeks were out to here. I popped up before my first ballet lesson, too. Just an early, I guess. Hey, by the way, nice going in there. But the line about Indianapolis, give me a break. Counselor Baxter. Oaks. Hey, you! Play a tetherball. Stop having fun and get over here. Okay, I. Next. Oaks C. Counselors. Oh, cut, no. cut that out! <laughs> okay. If you guys need anything, there's a counselor on duty by every half. Baxter! I just got a call from Portland. Timmy Messi came in on the late train. They're holding him at the station. Now, since he's in your bunk, it's your all responsibility right, to go right, and get him and bring right. him back. Hey, bring I got back. it, Skipper. I got the message. All right, try to get some sleep, you guys, okay? I think we're safe. I look forward to making friends with my bunkmates. But I know I can't expect to be too well liked. Poets usually aren't appreciated until they're dead. Your brother was the best athlete in camp last year. I guess he told you all about how we won Color War. Ah, uh, he might have. I don't remember. I don't remember. Color War is only the biggest thing that goes on around here. That's right. Big Herb's the camp director. He says Color War separates the men from the boys. No, 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 Bobby. This is what separates the men from the boys. Can you do that stuff yet? No, not yet. But the first day I can, I want to be ready. Oh, that boss is going to keep me up all night. Oh, don't complain. They'll send Walter. Who's Walter? Camp handyman. He always carries a hatchet. And no one has ever seen him chopping down trees. What do you mean? If you look real close at his hatchet, you'll see bloodstains. And on his clothes, too. Are you kidding? Nobody kids about Walter. It's that faucet again. Don't get Walter. Don't worry, I won't. Hey, yeah, uh, Brian. Want to see some slides? Uh, no, I'm recording my thoughts. What kind of slides, Jerry? Uh, lots of nude women. Keep them. I saw my cousin show in nude last month. <laughs> I'll take a candy bar any time. Hey, Novak. Uh, tell me how the PX works. They give you a ticket every Friday. You turn in for candy, cookies, or bubble gum. Perfect. Uh, tell me, Toby. How would you feel about switching beds with me? Sorry, the faucet trips. Okay, just asking. If you're not interested in my PX tickets. PX oh, tickets? That's right, Toby. Make the switch and you can have my tickets for the whole summer. You promise? Hey, this bro don't lie. But I'm new here and you'll know me, so I promise in front of everybody. It's a deal. This bro, PX tickets are worth more than baseball cards around here. You just made a big mistake. Stick around. Hey, you, uh, you had anything to eat since your little disappearing act, Timmy? Yeah, how far did you get before they finally caught you, anyway? Now it's a long ride back. I think you could try and be a little better company, don't you think? Look, uh, I realize you miss your home. Even if it is Cleveland. <laughs> You know, this is my first time at camp, too. You know, I may uh, I may hate it myself. But I figured as, as long as I'm up here, I might as well give it a shot. Who knows, after a couple days, I may discover that. I know, I know. Camp's really swell. Forget it. I'm crashing out. Let's see. This was my parents' idea. It forced me to come. They said camp would make me shape up. So, uh, you want to sneak back to Cleveland and beat the daylights out of them, right? Tim, why don't we make a deal, okay? 
You give camp No what? deals. It's my life and I'm busting out. No walls can hold me. Everybody take your seats, please. I have something very important to say to all of you. All right. As head counselor here at Camp Pinewood, it is my privilege to introduce to you campers our camp director Erwin Bigger Clopper Tell Walter to fix that thing Roger Walter Good morning campers welcome to Pinewood This will be the most important summer of your lives. Your parents have entrusted you to me and my staff to mold and shape you into the kind of young men they'll be proud to call their sons. In the bunks and the playing fields on the lake, you will learn the code of good conduct, the thirst for excellence, the drive for achievement that will serve and guide you for the rest of your days. As always, each camper, from the smallest shrub to the tallest sequoia, will get a chance to show just how much of the pinewood spirit he's absorbed and just how successful he will be in later life by his performance in our annual color war, the glorious culmination of your eight weeks here at Pinewood. Does he see this bull every year? So... Let's roll up our sleeves, let's all pitch in, and get on our toes and reach the stars to make this the most memorable, rewarding summer of our lives. Let's go, campers. Let's go, Pinewood! What did you say? I'd say it's me. No way, you'll have to kill me first. Let's go, Is that? It's Walter. If you look close at his hatchet. No, 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 not the guy, Bobby. What have we here? Hi, Mr. Clapper. Uh, this is Rhonda Malone, our new assistant nurse. Uh, Walter, take her bags over to the infirmary. She's not going to sleep in the kitchen, is she? I'd like you to meet Ike Dimmick, our head counselor and riflery instructor, Blanche Zucco, head nurse, uh, the Steve Sawyer swimming instructor, and Margo, my assistant camp director, and my wife. <laughs> oh, must be fun being assistant camp director. Oh, yeah, it's about as much fun as my other title. Torch me, Ike. Thank you, sweetheart. Margo, I asked you not to smoke in front of the campers, please. Don't deny me small pleasures, Earl. That's all I've got. I'll bet our coffee pot's ready. Oh. oh gracias, Rafael. Here you go, Tim. I hate eggs. Okay. Uh, There's a bacon. I hate bacon. Timmy, you can't hate this bacon. This is Porker's Pride Bacon. This bacon is putting me through college. Hey, are you a picky eater? None of your business, fatso. I'm not fat. Understand, I've just got a problem with my glance. And besides, weight's funny. It'll help with my career. Easy for 
for you. Thank you. They're beautiful. Ike, how charming. Oh, they're not for me. They were on the counter by the coffee pot. This was wrapped around them. What does it say? You entered the mess hall in bright morning sun without any warning. My heart was undone. Very sweet. Very. And very private. Oh, well, I couldn't help reading it, could I? Well. <laughs> Campers! Campers! Boys! I want to introduce the newest member of the Pinewood family, our new assistant nurse, Miss Rhonda Malone. Rhonda? <laughs> show Rhonda what we mean by that pine wood spirit as we sing our camp anthem. Steve, you start us off, all right? Come on, boys, ready? Ooh, and then I Well, it's only interesting if you're interested, and I'm not. You don't like romantic men? Well, this summer my interests are a little more practical. I'm here to work with the kids, do some field work towards my degree, keep my mind on my job. Looks like someone's going to make that hard for you. I wonder who. Pardon me, uh, am I dreaming or are you really here? Ow. Guess I'm really here. Hey, you, uh, you packed quite a pitch. <laughs> but I like that in the woman. Tell me, are you going to be around all summer? Well, I'll be here, but I won't be around. Excuse me. Hey, how can I excuse you for breaking my heart? Uh, do you actually get anywhere with lines like that? You'd be surprised, Rhonda. You'd be shocked. Pretty good, pretty good. We're we'll gonna swim the lake. No, not the first week. You're gonna have to wait. Take a peek at the Chickawana girls. Get out of here. Bob, what does he mean about the Chickawana girls? Camp Chickawana, cross the lake. Come on, Timmy. All you have to do is lie down in my arms. I'll hold you up. No! Okay, I got it. I know how you can learn this. Hang on to the edge of the dock, kick your legs. No way, my feet aren't leaving the ground. Hey, what's an oak doing in the crib with a shrub? Timmy can't swim. Toby, Toby, just can it, okay? Then my Toby's a little thoughtless. He's a fat piece. All right, okay, never mind. I got it. Okay, you won't float, you won't kick. Why don't you just stick your hand under the water? I gotta fix my suit first. Turn around. Oh, come on. Turn around. I'm turning. Turn it. You know, Timmy, if this is just a stall, it's not going to work. Timmy, I am turning around in a second. I don't know what the mystery is. All the guys have one. Excuse me? Whoa, stop that camp. Right, left, right. Oh, 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 oh. What did you say to me? Hey, 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 back off, Dodge. You'll the kids first. Uh, well, you did a good job on the sneak. I think you better come to the infirmary. Right, I'll come with you. I think he can find his own way back. Hey, Rhonda, if you leave this kid alone, he's going to be in Ohio by nightfall. Now, I'll go get our clothes and I'll come with you. Don't move. You know, you have a real knack for that. <laughs> what, washing knees? No, no, I mean, you have such steady hands. You have a good bedside manner. You know your way around a medicine chest. Now, I can tell you are one heck of a nurse. Thanks, but uh, this is just my summer job. Actually, I'm starting to be a child psychologist. Just tomorrow. Now, this might sting a little bit. A child psychologist? Isn't that amazing? I don't know. Been around for years. Oh, Rhonda, 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 the amazing thing here is, is the coincidence. You see, the coincidence here is that I am studying to be a, a child, child psychologist. psychologist. Right. Really? 
Oh, yeah, right. See, that's why I'm here. Uh, this is research towards my degree. Well, if you're studying child psychology, I I'm sure you could give me your opinion on, on something that's been bothering me. I'll give it a shot. Well, you must have read uh, the strips and pads, uh, understanding the child from Oedipus to the prom. It's the basic text. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, of course I read that. Well, uh, do you think they're right about the, the phenomenon of the uh, eidetic imagery affecting the cognitive functioning and uh, psychosocial development of the uh, pre-adolescent child? Ah, uh, they have a point. It doesn't exist. Yeah, you're right. The way The book doesn't exist. Strips and pads. Not only beautiful, but smart. Not only beautiful and smart, but engaged. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Engaged? To be married? Yeah, that's usually the way it works. All right, you're all set, Timmy. Stop back in a couple of days and let me take a look at it. I won't be here in a couple of days. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Tim. Whoa, 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 Tim, Timmy. Uh, look, Rhonda, marriage is a serious step. Nay, nay, a leap. I would just hate to see you take so deep a plunge at, at so tender an age. And I won't invite you to the wedding. And uh, if I were you, I'd uh, keep an eye on Timmy. It sounds like he's planning a trip. I will, I will. But uh, it's going to be tough. Oh, why is that? Well, because, Rhonda, I uh, only have eyes for you. You don't quit, do you? You want me to? Uh, don't answer that. Brother does. Hey, Mark does his thing, I do mine. Shakespeare, you're on deck. for varsity tomorrow. Like to give it a shot? Like to? Are you kidding? Well, you might just be too good for junior varsity this year. Uh, excuse me, but uh, isn't the varsity for the older guys? Yep, I'd be the first Oakland Pinewood history to make it. Yeah, Novak, have you thought about getting someone to handle this for you? Huh? Right, Jerry. It's an honor to play for the varsity. Hey, it's an honor to play for the Yankees, but Dave Winfield still cashes his checks. I don't know. I'll think about it. Let me finish my two pages. Four pages. That breaks the camp record. Hey, uh, Brian. Left something on the bench. Give me that. Hey, it's yours. I bet you read it. Some of it. And it was a privilege. You know, you're a great writer. But I'll tell you one thing, you should be putting your talents to better use. Those guys can hardly write their own names. Your bunkmates need you to write letters home for them. I'm a serious artist. I know you're a serious artist. Trust me. You go along with me on this letter writing thing, and I'll help you out with the nurse. Okay, guys, listen up. From now on, the letter day's a thing of the past. Brian here will deliver a perfect two-pager every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And if your parents aren't more satisfied than they've ever been, we guarantee your money back. Boy, you can't... Wait a minute, wait a minute. How much money? Just your PX tickets. Forget it. Think it over for now. Six quality pages a week for only 50 cents worth of candy. You guys, you won't have to write home again for the rest of the summer. Your fingers won't touch a pencil. 
All right, gang. It's two thirty. Let's have those letters. Mm. Mm. What are you doing? Brian was throwing up in the bathroom. He didn't want the other guys to know he's sensitive. Right. Uh, Brian, come on. I'll walk you to the infirmary. Okay, now. Rest hour is over. Campers, to your activities. I'm not going to be here for long, Jerry. But while I'm here, you can have my PX tickets. Let Brian write that joke. Good. Toby? Oh. Okay, I guess you spit it out. You can have your PX tickets back, Jerry. I'm with you on this, Jerry, and on the varsity, too. Hey, I got another customer for you. Brian here isn't feeling very well. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but Blanche will take great care of you. I'm on my way to see Big Earl over the list of everything this place needs. I'll, uh, I'll walk with you. Check your later, Brian. Bye. So, engaged to be married. Look, there must be something else. No, 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 Rhonda, about. Rhonda, Rhonda, this really interests me. I mean, I just don't know how it feels to be so sure about someone. How can you know that you want to be with this one person day in, day out? Day in, day you out. You just know. You you just know. You want to be with this one person? Day in, day out, yes. So, uh, so what are you doing up here in Maine for eight weeks without him? Look, Martin is in medical school, okay? And this summer he had a chance to participate in a very intensive hospital program that would be very beneficial to his career. It meant working day and night. Well, he doesn't exactly put you very high on his list of priorities, does he? This is a very important program. His father had to pull a lot of strings to get him in. Oh, so the old man is rich. That doesn't matter. The point is, since Martin was going to be busy all summer, I decided to get myself a job. Right, and uh, it'll give you a little time away from him. Make sure you're doing the right thing. I didn't say that. You didn't have to. Bye-bye. <laughs> Congratulations. You made varsity, all right? I'm putting Ronnie here in left. I'm going to try you in center. What do you say? Great. Uh, talk to my agent. All right, what's this all about, Bobby? All I want to say is that I want... I'll speak for my client. We feel if Camp Pinewood's going to ask Bobby Novak uh, for the unique service of playing on the varsity, then Bobby Novak's entitled to just compensation for said service. But it's a privilege to play on the varsity. That's right, Big Irv. For someone my client's age, it could also be dangerous. He'll be up against bigger, stronger kids, more chance of physical injury, not to mention psychological damage. Well, hello there, I. Uh, we're conducting camp business here, Margo. All right, I've heard enough of this. Listen, Bobby, if you're not thrilled about representing Pinewood at the varsity level, why, you can just stay with the JVs. And as for you, Disbro, your brother made a great contribution here. He was a winning captain in color war. I wonder what he'd say if he could be here to see your little speech. I don't know, but I'll tell you why Mark's not here. He got so fed up losing baseball games to Tall Timbers. This summer, he went to Tall Timbers instead of Pinewood. <gasps> what did your parents say about that? Nothing. They're fed up with Pinewood losing, too. I had to plead with them to come here. Come here, Ike. Just how good is this Bobby Novak, anyways? Well, he's very good, bigger. But there's a principle here. Principle? Wanna... The only principle here is that the parents pay for this camp, you doofus. Yes, sir. You can't keep losing campers as a competition. No, sir. You'd better win some baseball games this summer, or you're going to be looking for another jab. Yeah. Boys, I'm 
curious. Just what did you have in mind? You never told me Mark wanted to talk to him. That's because Mark's back in Philadelphia. He's gone down here. He had to go to summer school. Our founding fathers were certainly brave men. And now, over 200 years later, we find these same truths to be self-evident. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of victory. Be it a revolutionary war or a color war. So happy birthday, America. And now, let's light up the sky. I'd be amazed if Earth could light up anything. So you went to see her and it backfired. I guess we're gonna have to try something else. Why don't you go with your strength? Why don't I love letter? I already wrote her a poem. I'll write her again. Well, this time, leave out the rhymes, but don't let it interfere with the letter home for the bunk. glad you came with me tonight. Oh, Timmy's an interesting case. Oh, yeah, he's interesting. If I catch him again, I'm gonna wring his little neck. Sounds like you care about him a lot. Really, does it? Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so worried. You know, I probably would miss him if he ever got away. I feel like Wiley Coyote without the Roadrunner. <laughs> Hey, does Martin make you laugh? I mean, uh, I know those medical types can be a little grim. Look, uh, why don't we make a deal, all right? Uh, you don't ask me any more questions about my fiancé, and I won't ask you any questions about your girlfriend. That is, if you have one. Hey, Rhonda, if you, uh, you want to know if I have a girlfriend, why don't you just come out and ask? <laughs> I don't want to know. Be, uh, be a little painful for you? Look, uh, why don't we just head for the bus station, okay? Timmy may be there. No. No? No. I don't have a girlfriend. But the night's still young. It's a very simple principle. To get on the bus, you got to buy a ticket. He didn't buy a ticket, so he didn't get on the bus. Look, he's a very resourceful little kid. He may have sneaked by you. No one sneaks by me, Sonny. Okay, fine. Look, uh, humor me, okay? Pick up the phone, call ahead to Portland, and have them check the 915 when it gets there. All right, just relax. I was just trying to think of where else you might have gone. Look, I bet anything you came here. It's the easiest way out of town. Got a few witnesses. Want to wake one of them up? I don't think there's any point. Uh, hold it. Unless I'm mistaken, half the guy on the bench just moved. Half? Hey, buddy. Like I said, no one sneaks by me. Oh, whoa. Sorry, sir. Well, I was really worried about you tonight. Uh, Dennis was in a panic. Thought he was going to strangle that old geezer at the bus station. I was definitely thinking about it. But you took care of him for me. Now, I'm sure your bunkmates will... They work. hate me. Oh, I think you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. They always pick on me because I can't swim and because I don't eat a lot of food, and I always strike out. Well, you just got to give them a chance to get to know you better. Now, I'm sure once they realize how much imagination you have and, and how brave you are... I'm serious. Look, think of all the imagination it takes to 
You keep thinking of new ways of escaping. I don't know how you do it. Neither do I. Think of all the terrible things that could happen to a boy your age trying to make his way all the way from Maine to Ohio. Doesn't seem to bother you a bit. You know, I'm sure with all that bravery, it's just a matter of time before you conquer your fear of the water and are swimming like a fish. Well, you know, I think it'd be a real shame if, if you got away before giving your bunkmates a chance to realize just how special you really are. But that's just my opinion. Well, I think I'm going to say goodnight. Ah, oh, Rhonda. You know, I'd say Timmy's not the only one who's special around here. <laughs> Why is it I get the feeling you tell that to all the girls? Because I do. <laughs> but, uh, this time I think you really mean it. Well, congratulations, you're making progress. But I'm engaged, remember? Right. It's a shame. I can turn my back if you want to kiss. <laughs> no, that's all right, Timmy. We don't want to kiss. Good night. Speak for yourself. My beautiful darling, my life is in torment, though no one, not even you, might suspect it. All right, everybody, stay together, okay? Don't put any apples in Okay, everybody here? Penella is here. Mm -hmm. My only thoughts are of you. My only hopes, your loving eyes and your warm smile. My only thoughts are of you. My only hopes, your loving eyes and your warm smiles. May the time not be distant till parents weekend. Your devoted son, Brian. Is it too much? Too much? It's every parent's dream. Hey, we gotta copy that. I mean, you'll get your chance. We're not the only bunk in camp, you know. Sequoia B. Where's the letter? Brian. Here's scrub A. Don't eat it all. I'll be right back. All right, come on, guys. You guys see that candy in there? Yeah! All that candy could be yours, provided. I want to sit in front. Sit down, Miss Smith. Oh, oh. Start a trend. Come on, the girls are over that way. How do you know? Instinct. What's wrong? Shh, someone's over there. Our fearless leader. You're not into this, Dennis. Oh, no, no, no. I'm into it. I'm into it. It's just that, uh, well, you know, archery really taxes the muscles. It just seems like your mind's on something else or someone else. Don't be silly. Enchilada. There's Irene. Let me see. What do you mean? She's mine. 
Come on, you wouldn't be here if I didn't help paddle the canoe. Which one is she? The blonde on your left. Okay, no harm. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. She just left. Right, come on, we'll follow her. No way, I'm staying right here. Bobby, there's no one left in there but the six-year-olds. Is that bad? Don't you know anything? Come on, let's go. Watch out for the poison ivy. Called. What are you doing here? We uh, came for a little buffet. Thought you might like to join us. Terry, if you guys get caught, yeah, we can handle it. But if you're scared, I'm you not scared. Say? Good. Then uh, how about getting a girl from my pal Bobby here? Who's that girl? She doesn't look familiar. Seen that face somewhere. Timmy. to my father and his father before him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, what are you guys doing? Beat it. The girls are after us. Uh, listen, I gotta go, okay? We'll uh, continue this another time. Continue what? You guys don't realize how special I am. Go. Guys. Where's Timmy? They must have got him. bad thing. Are you going to send me home? No. But it'll go a lot easier for you if you cooperate with us. Now, who was with you at Camp Chickawana? Listen, Big Irv, do you, uh, do you think it's right to ask him to inform on his friends? Dennis, please. This is the Pinewood way. Now, Timmy, who was with you? I was. I confess. I was with Timmy at Camp Chickawana. Uh-huh. Well, it just so happens that two boys were seen with Timmy at Camp Chicken Wanner, so your confession doesn't wash. You quit trying to shield them and stay out of this. All right, Timmy. Are you going to talk? I see. All right, Ike. Take over. Gladly. Uh. Hello, Timmy. Feeling healthy? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Good. Good, then maybe you'd like to go out into the forest and chop some wood. 
with Walter. He's gonna talk. You wouldn't like that, would you? No. Well, then maybe we can work on your swimming in the deep area. Hey, listen, why don't you just tell him you're going to use him as a target on the rifle range? You were told to stay out no, no, of the I don't mean enough. Now, tell me for the last time, who was with you at Camp Chikiwana? Brave guys don't rat. Ever. All right, Timmy. You leave me no choice but to impose upon you the severest penalty in my power. Timmy Mezzi, the entire summer, no, I repeat, no PX tickets. I'll give him half the camp's PX tickets. <laughs> he earned them. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Mezzi, listen, uh, I've been having some trouble getting Timmy to come out for the general swim. See, he's a little embarrassed because he has to stay in the shallow end with the younger kids. That's fine. If he gets embarrassed enough, he'll stop his nonsense and start swimming. I don't think it works that way. Dennis, we don't know where to turn with Timmy. He's such a picky eater. He won't play sport. He has trouble making friends. I think the word groping for a deer is loser. Well, anyway, I'm worried sick over him. I have to take pills to sleep at night. Look, Timmy is starting to make friends. I mean, just recently, he displayed admirable loyalty to a couple of his bunkmates. And to, uh, to me, too, for that matter. Really? Oh. Well, uh, that's not important. But the point is, Timmy is making some progress. And I just want to know if it's okay with you if he misses General Swim. Well, I suppose so. Great. Thank you. And uh, thank you for Timmy's sake. Well, well, that was very well done. Thank you. Admirable loyalty? You were telling the truth at being Camp Chickawana, weren't you? Well, nothing was going for me here. Oh, I suppose you had your hands full over there. Rhonda, such personal questions. What would Martin think? Well, why don't you ask him when he gets here? Wait a minute. You mean uh, young Dr. Kildare is coming here? Yeah, he's coming in the Oh, Rhonda, you didn't tell me. Well, he's not coming to see you. I wish you would. I need a doctor. I got this pain right here. Why are you always making fun of Martin's profession? What are you going to be when you grow up? Rhonda, college is four short years. Now, do you think I want to miss all the fun getting ready for a profession? There'll be time for that later. Bye, Dennis. I have to go pick up Martin. Rhonda, you don't have to. Don't do anything I want to do. I didn't see Mark out there for Tall Timbers. Mark, Tall Timbers. The girl, who just won the game? Well, all right, uh, I'll see you at the barbecue. Toby has really come of age this summer. He used to just write to us about the food, but his last few letters have been very emotional. My Archie, too. I blush to tell you what he writes to us. My only thoughts are of you. My only hopes in your loving eyes and warm smiles. You know, Ron, it hasn't been easy. But I think I'm making all the right contacts at the hospital. <laughs> Hi there. Hi oh, there. Hi, Dennis. Uh, Martin, this is Dennis Baxter. He's one of the counselors. Well, pleased to meet you, Baxter. Well, uh, same here. You know, Rhonda has told me so much about you. <laughs> really? <laughs> Been bragging, hey? <laughs> of course, I meant that humorously. <laughs> I uh, had a hunch. But uh, seriously, Martin, you're, uh, you're a very lucky man. Rhonda's quite a girl. Oh, I know that. You see, Baxter... 
I'm in a very tough hospital program. Only the top students are admitted. But every night, no matter how exhausted I am, I look at Rhonda's picture and I say to myself, you're a lucky guy, Martin Blair. You uh, certainly are. How about Martin Blair? That's what I say to myself. <laughs> Rhonda, I've got a headache. Uh, Rhonda's off duty tonight, little man, so why don't you find another nurse to take care of you, hmm? Come on, Brian. Well, it was, uh, interesting, uh, meeting you, Martin. Yes. <laughs> All right. Attention, everyone. Att please take your seats. Thank you. I'd like to introduce you all to our fearless leader, Erwin Big Irv Clopper. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. I want to welcome you. And now I'd like to introduce Pinewood's own dessert king, Mr. Toby Kaplan. Let's hear it for Toby. Come on up there, boy. Thank you, Bigger. How's everyone doing tonight? Are you enjoying your food? If you think it tastes good now, you should have tried it Thursday when it was cooked. <laughs> Thursday! <laughs> But seriously, folks. So you see, Big Earth, some people feel the medical profession is overpaid. But how much is a functioning arm worth to you? Or a healthy pair of lungs? Or even a mended hip? Go any lower and the answer is nothing. Martin, I didn't wait four weeks for you to come up here so you could lecture about medicine. Didn't you miss me? Well, of course I did. What a foolish question. I told you, didn't I? No. Well, of course I did. And a little bit later, I'll show you just how much. Hmm? <laughs> you uh, seem to be the only one who hasn't eaten your coleslaw or your pork and beans, Timmy. I'm not very hungry. Timmy, it makes me so flustered seeing you now. I eating. think I can handle this one, Doris. Uh, why don't you take your pills? They're for bedtime. Well, why don't you take them now? Get a head start. Uh, Mrs. Mezzi, I was wondering, you know, I've been having a little trouble getting to sleep myself with parents weekend and all that. And uh, I was wondering if... Uh... What group are you in, kid? I'm a weed. Uh, knock, knock. Burger, Margo. Merci. <laughs> These people talk about the political doctor, the social doctor, and the doctor in education. <clears throat> Oh, that's true. But what we must not forget is the medical doctor comes first. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Doc, how do you like your burger? Medium? Thank you. After all, without medicine, where would a doctor be? Uh, Rhonda? Oh, no thanks. I'm just here for the company. By now, my love, you must wonder who I am. I'll give you three clues. I'm taller than a shrub, smaller than a sequoia, and strong as an oak. As ever, a secret admirer. Uh, there you go, Doc. Why, thank you, Baxter. <laughs> Enjoy. The sequoias are at baseball. I want those shrubs at general swim. There's no two of them. Hey, Doc. Uh, listen, I'm on duty tonight, so I just wanted to say have a nice visit, okay? Gosh, uh, Martin, you feeling all right? You know, I don't know. I can hardly keep my eyes open. <laughs> mm. Well, I guess that uh, medical program must wear you out, huh? That's the truth. You hear that medical doctors have it easy. 
We're not in our emergency room. Well, I think we need to lie down. Let's go to the infirmary, okay? Martin, that's just what Big Irv wanted to avoid. That's why he gave me the night off. Look, like I said, I'm on duty tonight. Martin could take a nap in my bunk and uh, you could pick him up later. You wouldn't mind? What are friends for? What'd you do, stab him? Not yet. Besides, stabbing is too messy. Hey, let's not get drastic. If you want to take care of him, there's other ways. What happened? Uh, Toby snores. Maybe he got fed up and left. He took the bed with him? I'm off duty in ten minutes. I can help you look some more if you want. Besides, wouldn't you rather spend your time with your uh, friend across the way? No, actually, I don't think she'd be too interested. You see, the uh, last time I was with her, I didn't take my mind off you. Well, I have some idea how you must have felt. visit remains foremost in my heart. A communion with all I cherish and a promise of the joy awaiting me at summer's end. Your adoring son, Brian. One of your best. I'd just like to change the wording in this first Never! Letter. Okay, okay. We'll leave it like it is. And uh, Timmy, you want to copy this first? No, I'm not saying that kind of junk to my parents anymore. Timmy, you haven't been yourself since parents' weekend. You haven't tried to run away in days. Why should I? So my parents can tell me how ashamed I should be because I can't swim? You'll be swimming someday, Timmy. When? I'll always be afraid of the water. your eyes, arch your back, and relax. I know you can do it. Open your eyes. Help! What happened? Timmy was floating. I was? Dearest Ron, my heart is on fire. Love. My heart is a flame, and your face is the match. I don't know, Margo, really. What would Big Earth say? Big Earth is too spineless to say anything about anything. But, well, no, it really, it isn't the Pinewood way. Oh, it couldn't, you know. I, why don't you just kiss me? What harm would there be? You must have played spin the bottle in school. No, I went to military school. Oh, you poor thing. Let me show you what you missed. Close call. Don't be afraid. Now, 
why don't you take a nice hot bath with me? All right. But only if you stay on your side of the tub. Scout's honor. Attention, please. Color war is declared. Repeat, color war is declared. This is not a test. This is the real thing. Color war is declared. under competitive conditions. I'd like to remind every gray cadet and every blue midshipman of the immortal words of Bradman Rice, who said, it matters not who won or lost, but how you played the game. I'd also like to remind them of the immortal words of Vince Lombardi, who said, if it doesn't matter who wins, how come they keep score? Color war is declared. and you're on the blue. Don't talk to that boy next to you. He could be on the blue team. Don't share your toothpaste with that other one. He could be on the gray. Color war is declared. Your friend could be your enemy. I hope we're all on the same team. We split us right down the middle. May the best team win. Yeah, the gray. Don't start, Tubby. I'm innocent for all the blue. Big deal. We got a better team. Oh, yeah? I haven't lost a color war yet. Guys, guys, come on. Let's not get caught up in bigger fun and games, huh? Yeah. Gisbro, you wanted in the arts and crafts shop. I already made my lanyard. It's the gray headquarters now. Come on. Oh, Jerry, sit down. Candy. Ah, no thanks. Lieutenant Farrell and I have been evaluating our personnel. And I find it very interesting that you've been running a letter-writing concession for the entire camp. And turning the PX into your own personal candy store is quite a record. You want me off the team? No, no. I want to make you sergeant for all the Oak Cadets. Me? They always give that to the athletes, like my brother. In times of war, the call is for men who can get things done. Have you shown that that's the kind of man you are? Sergeant Disbrow. All right, gentlemen, hold it down now. I need your attention. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. The Oak Apache really is about to begin. Now, I remind each team that no participant may begin his leg of the relay until a clean tag has been registered. Is that clear? All right, on your marks. Set. Start again. That's all right. 
go. Dizro, you pick this lineup. When do we start winning? No problem. Okay, the subject for the 50-word composition is sportsmanship. Two words. Outstanding. Nice picking, Disbro. Here, but I'm still not pleased with the last paragraph. It's hard to create against the deadline. That's okay, Brian. You just keep doing it your way. All right, the counselor hunt is about to begin. Now, there are five counselors hidden in five spots on the camp grounds. Each counselor is worth ten points to the team of the camper that finds him. Are you ready? Yeah! All right, go! 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 Yeah! 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 See any counselors? No. Stay away from that. Why? Poison ivy. It'll put you in the infirmary for days. Okay, gentlemen, next, the Oak Medley Swimming Relay. Uh, we got Tommy Wallace for the butterfly. We got Jack the Fish Carpenter for the breaststroke. Bobby, you're going to do the freestyle, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, backstroke. What do we got for backstroke? I'd hate to waste a good swimmer in that spot. Each kid can only handle one event. Steve, come on. We get three of the best swimmers in camp on this team. All we need is someone who can float for the backstroke and we're in. How about Timmy? Come on. Timmy Mezzi can't hold his breath. The shrubs make fun of him. Let's keep this on the serious side, okay? We've been teaching him how to swim, and he does a backstroke. Wait a minute. Wait. Bobby, are you telling me that Timmy can swim? Sort of. Well, I have to see it for myself before I can officially enter him, but I don't see any reason I can't pencil him in. Okay, Timmy and Messi. I found him prowling around outside. He's on the gray. Steve, I had a nightmare. Walter was after me. It's okay. He's in my bunk. Jamie, you're not supposed to be in here. You're on the other team. But I got scared. He was cutting me up. Hey, okay. Look, give me a minute to finish up here, and uh, I'll walk you back to the bunk, okay? Good work, Jamie. You make a list of any ten candies from the PX and they're yours. Hold it, hold it. Ah, uh, they must have been wise to us. This is a phony entry sheet. How can you tell? Timmy Mezzi's entered in a swimming event. And you can forget your ten candies, you little hey, punk. You're not going to get them. Backstroke in the medley relay. That's possible. What do you mean? Well, Timmy's starting to swim the backstroke. He is? Sort of. Well, he's got the best three oak swimmers covering him, but he's still a weak link. And Timmy Mezzi's in your bunk, isn't he? Hey, hold on now. Timmy's my friend. If you don't come through... Ronnie, hold it! I'll just say this once, Diz, bro. Last summer, your brother led his team to victory. You've got a chance to help yours. The decision's up to you. Take your time. Your teammates are waiting. I'll, I'll try and think of something. 
Well, you really did it to yourself, Brian. You know, it almost looks like you threw off your clothes and purposely took a roll in poison ivy. Does it? Well, I think I got you covered. How's that feel? Could you do it a little more? I don't think it's going to stop the itching. It helps. You know, I think these clothes are infected. I'm going to put them in some boiling water. You want this? It doesn't matter. It's my essay from the Apache Relay. Sure it matters. You worked very hard on this. Mind if I read it? No, I, it's oh, not very on. good. I, I wasn't great. really finished with it. Like the essay? You're a beautiful writer, Brian. I'm contagious. I think I'll risk it. Good night. Get you back a little more, Timmy. Kick your legs. <sighs> okay. Oh, great. Bobby, when did this happen? Where? It's a long story. Well, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think? To me, I think you're one heck of a swimmer. And I think the blue team is going to be proud to have you in the Oak Medley Relay. You want to practice some more? All right. There you go. All right. On your back. And go. Uh, all right, give it a kick. unlike yourself. The first race he was ever in was during Color War. The medley relay. You know, like the one we're doing tomorrow? Yeah. He thought he'd be okay, but the pressure of the race... What happened to him? It's... it's too horrible. Tell me. He drowned. That is horrible. A tough break, all right. And I was afraid that because you can swim now, a little... They might try and enter you in the swim meet tomorrow. But I guess that was silly of me. I'm sorry to bother you, Timmy. Sweet dreams. You can do it. Come on. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on. 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 Come on
with all the other babies. Hey, Tommy, we win as a team, we lose as a team. We didn't lose, he did. It's all right, Timmy. He's all right, back to the races. How's Timmy? Poor sportsmanship, minus two points, boom. now. With only this afternoon's activities and the song and cheer to go, score stands at blue 923, gray 921. A difference of only two points. <laughs> that is all. His best. Yeah. Where's Timmy? I don't know. He just said he wanted to be alone. Ah, oh, great. Okay. I'm going to look around camp for him. If anyone asks, I'm uh, back at the bunk cheering him up, okay? I ache and I suffer with anguish untold. But what could be rougher than 11 years old? I like that. Uh, hi, Brian. Uh, Rhonda, can I see you for a minute? Yeah. Look, you haven't seen Timmy, have you? Not since the swimming. Don't tell me. He's gone, the old disappearing act. I should have been able to predict this. Look, he I gotta it. go and find him, okay? Check some of his old haunts. Oh, wait a second. Remember who found him first. Brian, I gotta... to you. If you're looking for Timmy, I, I want to go with you. You can't do that. The old baseball game is this afternoon. 30 points. Why? Because Timmy's my friend. You sure didn't treat him like he's your friend today. I know. I made a big mistake. You're the reason he ran away. I know, Bobby. When you're always looking for angles like I am, sometimes you wind up behind the eight ball. I don't care about teams anymore. Just want to find Timmy and make up for what I did. I know his moves. I bet he's already outside the camp. Brian, what are you doing? Sometimes there are more important things than romance. When do we go after Timmy? Right now. All of us. Come on, Toby. But I gotta work on my hands for the song and cheer. Sign of a canoe, no footprints. The laundry truck doesn't come to it tomorrow. I don't think he came back here. Uh, maybe not. Hey, look. Way over there. Isn't that Walter's motorboat? Hey, if Timmy was desperate for a quick way out of camp, he could have hit under that canvas. We go look for him. Are you crazy? You want to be alone in the woods with Walter? Hey guys, guys, Timmy's our bunkmate. We all have to go in there and see if we can find him. Or what's left of him. Look, it was you. If Walter got him, his blood is on your hands. entire bunk is missing. Plus, Dennis, I can't run the whole blue team alone. I hate to say it, bigger, but it looks like they deserted. You know, Ike, I just can't believe that a Pinewood counselor or camper would desert during color war. But if they did, it's grounds for court-martial. Absolutely. And if they're guilty, no ice cream for a week. Hey, Dennis, aren't those Pinewood boats? Look, there's someone there. It's Walter. And he's got Timmy. 
I like it, Walter. Timmy! Jerry, is that you? Come on out. Walter won't hurt you. He's just a painter, a distracted expansionist. What are all of you doing here? We came to get you. Forgive me. I'm a washout, like tough break tops. Timmy, listen. There wasn't any tough break tops. Don't try and humor me. I'm not. I made him up. Just to scare you, so that my team would win the relay. What a dirty trick. I know. I guess competition brings out the worst in people. I'm sorry. Do you come back with us now? I don't know. Walter was really nice when he found me in his motorboat. He said he'd paint my portrait. I'm sure Walter will take a rain check. You ready to come back to the camp with us, Timmy? Everybody at camp thinks I'm a quitter, that I can't swim. No, they don't. Besides, we know you can swim. I want to show them. Well, you can show them when we get back to the camp. I want to show them now. You guys swam the lake, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Timmy, look, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you couldn't swim a stroke. Now, you've come a long way, even if you don't swim the lake. Uh, you want to give it a shot? We're behind you all the way. Listen, you don't have anything more to prove. It uh, looks like the whole camp has seen you swim, so if you want to get out. No, I was just thinking. Thinking what? If my parents could see me now. from you, Admiral Baxter. You and your bunch deserve it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Big Irv, just call me Baxter, okay? I'm resigning my commission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can you? Yeah. Look, all I know is the guys in my bunk were getting along just fine until Color War turned them against each other. Now they're back together and I want them to stay that way. We're with yeah. Dennis! Yeah! yeah. Just, just wait a second. Uh, now, 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 Color War is nothing more than the opportunity to show just how much of the Pinewood spirit you've absorbed. And as virtually the entire camp has shown up here, sacrificing your own events to cheer on this brave, daring little man and his 
in his long swim from humiliation to glory, well, it's clear to me that 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 you're overflowing with with the Pinewood spirit. And well, as camp director, I declare this year's color war over, and I pronounce all of you winners. Just a second, Big Irv. You can't just call off color war. Uh, the gray was on its way to winning, and you can't... Uh, Ike, Ike, Ike. What uh, is it, Baxter? Excuse me. Can I talk to you for a minute? Let me give you a little advice. Cool off. <laughs> Baxter. Hey, you can... take it easy, General. Uh, we're going to have to tell Big Irv how you've never played spin the bottle. <laughs> Jeepers. You never called me bigger before. You never deserved it before. You hear that? All right. There you go. Hey, what's up, bigger? Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Dennis, Margo and I have decided to spend more time together. Appoint someone younger, someone more in touch with the boys to take her place as assistant camp director. What do you say? Uh, what would I do? Well, you'd be recruiting in the off months, as your studies allowed. And why, next summer you'd help me run the camp. <gasps> You gonna be here next summer? Well, uh, that depends on how well I'm recruited. Portrait of the Artist as a Young Camper, a first novel by Brian Firestone. He drove all the way down here to meet me. And technically, he's still my fiancé. I thought it was over between you two. It is. But you have to let me tell him my own way. In my own time. Uh, look, uh, I gotta take some kids to Cleveland. Uh, when you, uh, when you get this technicality worked out, let me know. Guys made another cake for you, Toby. Wow! So long, Jerry. Ah, uh, see you, Toby. Uh, why don't you work on some new material, huh? Hey, Timmy! What are you gonna do when you get home? Well, my parents are putting in a pool. Better get on the train to Philadelphia. Have a good winter. I will. I'm negotiating Dennis's deal with Big Earl. Glad you asked that. See, I'm adding your profession. It's much better taken care of than, say, have a man in mind. No, you see, doctors don't have unions. We don't get them. They pay Decided to ride him from Cleveland. <laughs> Just for the allowance.